welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. We're glad to be here on this Christmas Eve to celebrate the goodness of God and the Lord. And we come to do that in, in this occasion. Year for years, I was pastor of a church in Fayetteville, Korean church. And we, we did midnight mass on Christmas Eve at 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock in the morning. So you'll get home a lot earlier than that tonight. We won't be keeping you that long. But we do want to go to prayer and ask the Lord to bless our time together. We have a wonderful time that we will have in music. And then afterwards, we'll have a fellowship that you'll enjoy as well. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful privilege to come together on Christmas Eve 2023 and rejoice in the God of our salvation, to rejoice in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless everything that is done. Bless it to our hearts as we receive it, and we give you honor and glory in this house tonight. And everybody joined in and said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. 
did. Thank you, Lord.
unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and up over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform.
In the same country there were shepherds in the fields. They were watching their flock of sheep of them. The angel of the Lord came to them. The shining greatness of the Lord shone around them. They were very much afraid. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. See, I bring you good news of joy, which is for all people. Today, one who saves from the punishment of sin has been born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. There will be something special for you to see. This is the way you will know him. You will find the baby with cloth around him, lying in a place where cattle are fed. At once, many angels from heaven were seen along with the angel giving thanks to God. They were saying, Greatness and honor to our God in the highest heaven and peace on earth among men who please him. The angels went from the shepherds back to heaven. The shepherds said to each other, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see what has happened. The Lord has told us about this. They went fast and found Mary and Joseph. They found the baby lying in, lying in a place where cattle are fed. When they saw the child, they told what the angel said about him. All who heard it were surprised at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary hid all these words in her heart. She thought about them much. The shepherds went back full of joy. They thanked God for all they had heard and seen. It happened as the angel had told them. Change your position and stand with us. It may be good for you to do that. And we're going to sing Joy to the World.
For the shepherds watching their sheep outside Bethlehem one evening, the sudden sight in front of them was terrifying. A glorious angel shining brightly in the sky was enough to make anyone rub his eyes and take a second look and run. But the first words from the angel's mouth were words to calm their frightened hearts. Do not be afraid. One of the messages that we learn from the Christmas story is that of peace. While God might appear overwhelming at times, he always wants to give us the assurance that with him peace reigns, even in the announcement of his son's birth. The peace we receive from the Christmas message calms our hearts, letting us know everything will be all right as long as we trust God. However, it also includes a message of peace that assures us that Jesus and his methods of teaching were all designed to draw us to the Heavenly Father. The same is true of his birth. There was no need to fear. Salvation would soon be realized for all mankind. Some people have never heard the message of Christmas. When we tell them why Christ came, they may be frightened. However, there is no cause for alarm. The gospel is good news, and God will give them the peace they need to submit to him. Dear Father, thank you for those who humble themselves before you and receive the same good news tidings today. December 25th, the scripture is John 14, 1 through 4. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus came to earth with the view of offering you salvation. He wanted you to have a restored relationship with the Father, a relationship that was so close, so intimate, that you would have your special place 
in the Father's house. In John 14, 2, Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Christmas is the holiday that we celebrate God coming to make His home with us for a season so that He would, could make our eternal home with Him in heaven. In the hymn, Heart the Herald Angel Sing, Charles Wesley describes the relationship Jesus came to establish. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all He brings. Risen with healing in His wings. Mild He lays His glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to rise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Christ's birth was God's reaching out to you. Celebrate the season. Amen. <coughs>
Legend of the Candy Cane, Author Unknown. Look at the candy cane, what do you see? Stripes that are red like the blood shed for me. White's for thy Savior, who's sinless and pure. J is for Jesus, my Lord, that's for sure. Turn it around, a staff you will see. Jesus, my shepherd, who's born for me. Luke 138, when Mary was told of what she would be doing to bring forth the Son of God, Gabriel spoke to her and told her that God would be using her in a great way to birth the Christ child. And she was amazed course as anyone would be. But she said this phrase in verse 38 of chapter 1 of Luke, be it unto me according to your word. God has given us many promises throughout the Bible. Some Bible analysts say there are thousands of them throughout the Bible promises. Some of them are conditional. Some of them are unconditional promises that God has promised us. And I was recently given a bread box that used to be on a lot of people's tables many years ago. And in this bread box there are 120 promises out of the thousands in the Bible that are made to you and to me throughout the Bible. And I want to encourage you, I want to encourage myself to have the same attitude and the same kind of faith that Mary had when Gabriel the angel came to her and told her she would bear the Son of God. 
Christ child. These 120, when I was younger, this bread box, it was made, actually made out of wood. Now the new ones are made out of plastic, but that's the way our things are these days. But it still has all the promises. We went around our table the other night, and we all took one of these, and we read the promise that we had picked out of the bread box. And I want to encourage you that God is the keeper of promises and the fulfillment of promises. One of my favorite promises that he made to me when I am confused, when I don't know what to do. How many ever been that way this past year where you just don't know what to do? In Proverbs 3, 6, we have one of those promises of the 120 that are in this box. And in that promise of Proverbs 3, 6, he says, in all your ways, if you will acknowledge me, here's the promise, I will direct your path. That's just one of thousands of promises that's been made to you and to me. I encourage you to do what Mary, Mary's confession, she said, she was, she was overwhelmed by this news, of course, that she was going to bear a child, the Christ child. But what she did, in verse 38 of chapter 1 of Luke, she said, be it unto me according to your word. This is God's word, his promises. And I would like for you to join me and let's give that same response that Mary gave to Gabriel the angel. Will you do it with me tonight? Be it unto me according to your word. And the Bible says, and then she worshiped God. There are only 120 here. But there are thousands in the Word that are promises that God has made to you and me. Let it be so. And the word Amen, let it be so. Now we're going to finish our time together with Sabbath night. so we can be prepared for that. And Barb's going to be coming to the piano to do that for us, to play that. And uh, didn't you enjoy the, the different recitations that were given and the different songs that were sung? Wasn't it a great experience tonight to be in the house of the Lord and His presence tonight? We thank you for being here tonight. And we're going to share a song together with, as you hold your, I better light my candle again. My light went out. Well, I had a hard time holding this and doing the bread box at the same time. So would you light my candle and help me to, so I can have a light too. Isn't that amazing how that happens? Lights just continue to spread from one to another, to another, to another. Okay? <coughs> You may have to hold that hand up high. Oh, hey. 
Christmas time certainly is a time of gifting, and we emphasize the fact that uh, Christ Jesus was given to us as a gift from our eternal Father. I don't know of any greater gift that Spring Lane Assembly of God has ever received other than these two wonderful people that you see standing here. And uh, so... We want to say thank you, and I'll give this to you, <laughs> but I want to also pray a prayer of thanksgiving over these two wonderful people. You know, once my father was a minister, one time someone introduced my parents as 
Pastor George and Pastor Lillian. And so today, I would I want you to know this is Pastor Dave and Pastor Joan. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you created us and created us with purpose. And that you have sent the greatest gift that we could ever have in the form of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for the blessing that you have given us and Pastor Dave and Pastor Joan. They have loved us just as you have loved us. They have cared for us. They have cried with us. They have celebrated with us, Lord. And we are so thankful for the gift that you've given us. And we just ask your blessing and favor upon them, Lord. In this season of gift giving, we can barely give back to them what they have given to us. And we want to express our thanksgiving to them. Father, I'm thankful for each one that is here tonight, and I pray that you have spoken to hearts, many hearts, and now as we uh, conclude this evening, I just pray for our spirit of fellowship as we enjoy the food that's been provided for us, and we ask you to bless it in Christ's name, amen. amen. Thank you all, and we're, we're very happy to have Pastor Bullen, Pastor Bullen, we're talking about you. Oh. Yeah. We're, we're so glad to have Pastor Bullen here and his wife. They're a wonderful couple. I mean, they're the best of the best. Their whole family is, is right now. I have some from the church tonight as well. Yeah, praise God. Amen. Yes. Thank you for coming. That's from Carthage, a good distance. And Teen Challenge, we have some Teen Challenge here. Hey! That's a That's a yes. Well, you, we're so glad everyone is with us. We almost had a live birth here. <laughs> but uh, maybe next year. <laughs> and God bless you. Join, get in the, in the line and, and be blessed with the food that has been prepared for you. God bless you. And Betty, we're glad to have you here. Betty May's here in the house. Elvis left, but Betty's here. <laughs>